Welcome to this DevTV presentation on the AutoCAD.NET API. This is Session 7, where we'll focus on jigs. After completing this session, you will understand what a jig is and how it can be used to help the user place an entity in a drawing. In the real world, a jig is a frame to which you can attach an item, hold it firm and then manipulate, or form it into position. In AutoCAD, a jig is very similar. A jig is an API class which you can use to visually manipulate an entity into place. A good example of this can be seen with the circle command. You pick the center point of the circle and then you select the radius. You can visually see the radius before you actually select it. We have two types of jigs in AutoCAD.NET. The entity jig controls just one entity at a time and the draw jig allows you to attach one or more entities. The entity jig wraps the object ARX implementation, whereas the draw jig is an exclusive class owned only by the .NET API. To use a jig, you will need to create a class that inherits from entity jig or draw jig. We'll focus on entity jig in this training. The constructor of the class that you derive from entity jig will take an argument for an entity that is being jigged. In this example, we create a new circle and pass that circle into the constructor for a class named MyCircleJig. This class was inherited from EntityJig. We then use the drag function of the editor and pass in our jig object. Once we call the drag method, several things will happen. First, the user drag movement is obtained and this movement is interpreted as a distance, angle, or point. These values are then used to update the entity's data and the entity's world draw method is called to redraw the entity on the screen. When all the desired properties of the entity are gathered by jigging, you can append the entity to the drawing. In the class that is inherited from entity jig, we need to override two functions. These are sampler and update. The sampler function is used to get input from the user such as size and location. In the update function, you update the display of the entity. The sampler function takes one argument. This is a jig prompts of editor input. Jig prompts is used in the sampler function to control what happens when the entity is being dragged. For example, you can use the acquire point function of the jig prompts to get a point or use the acquire distance method to get a distance from the user. The sampler function returns a sampler status enumeration. You need to determine the value of the sampler status to return if the location of the drag has not changed, you should return sampler status no change. Doing this will stop the drag image from doing excessive flickering. Remember that these functions are continuously called during the drag. If there is a change in the location of the drag, you return sampler status OK. When the sampler function returns sampler status OK, the update function is called and this is where you change the properties for the entity you passed into the constructor of your class that inherited from entity jig. In this example, the center of the circle is updated and then the radius. The select case was used to gather input using a jig in two passes. When the center is being gathered, acquire point is being used in the sampler function to set the value for the member variable center point. When the radius is being determined, acquire distance is being used to set the radius member variable. From this you get the idea that you will need to coordinate your code in the sampler function and the update function so they can work together to give you the behavior that you need. Now let's see an example of using the API to create an entity jig by going through the steps in Lab 7. Here's the Lab 7 Word document focusing on the entity jig. In this lab we're going to create a new class that will inherit from the entity jig Inherit like this, you need to implement a couple of functions. These are called sampler and update. In the first part of the lab, we do that. We create this class and implement those functions. And then in the rest of the lab, we add code to an existing command that's already given to us because we've covered that in previous lessons. It's called circle jig. And that will use our class. And our class is going to use the jig to emulates the circle command by getting a point and then the radius. 
The text below is the comments for the lab. You can copy and paste this Visual Studio project. There's also a Lab 7 project that you could just use to go through the lab steps that way. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and open up that project for Lab 7. We're in the BB module. Take a look at the start of Lab 7. We need to create a class named MyCircleJig. We want to inherit from Entity Jig. The functions that need to be overridden are automatically added. It's called Sampler and Update. But we need to put those in the right position so the rest of the lab steps will, will work okay. So we put the end class after step 33. So we need to move the sampler and update. So let's put the start of the sampler function below step 6 and the end function for that function is going to be below step 28. And then we put the update function below step 28 and then function below step 33. All right, now we're ready to get going. We've got uh, our basic layout of this class with the two functions that we need to determine what's going to happen when the update function is called and the steps here for what's going to happen when sampler gets called. So let's go ahead and go to step two now. We need two inputs for a circle, the center and the radius. So these are going to be a couple of member variables. These are private. We'll call them center point. This is a point 3D. and the radius, and that's a double. We're going to have two inputs, the center point and radius, so we need to keep track of the input number. So we'll use a, a variable to do that called current input value. Declare that as an integer. So on step four, we create a property called current input. Property current input. In get, we want to return the current input value that we declared in step three. And then in set, we want to set that value. So current input value will equal the value that's passed in. Okay, let's move along to step five. Create a default constructor. So sub new and by val and as entity. We need to put the end sub after step six. We need to call my base new and use the int passed into the constructor. So this is done because entity jig does not have an accessible sub new that can be called with no arguments. So let's go ahead and do that. My base. and pass in that entity.
So now we're into the sampler function, and in this step, we create the select case, and we use our current input value member variable. This is where we're going to be getting the center of the circle. We'll have two different cases. We'll have a 0 and 1. And then here in step 9, we declare a variable named old point as point 3D. That's going to be equal to our center point member variable. And in step 10, we need to declare a variable as a prompt point result. We'll call that jig prompt result. That's going to be equal to the prompts and then acquire point. And let's ask the user to pick the center point. Prompts is being passed in. As you can see, the sampler is passing in prompts as the editor input jig prompts. Let me see if I can put a line continuation character so you can see that better. And so we're getting this jig prompts called prompts, and then using that, we use acquire point. So our code will be looking for a point, and as the user drags the circle around, we'll get that point. In step 11, we need to check the status of the prompt point result that was created in step 10. Then we put the end up after step 14. Want to see if that's prompt status OK. And we move the end if after step 14. And here we can set the center point member variable to the value of the prompt point result created in step 11. Now here in step 13, we check to see if the cursor has moved. And we can use an if then statement and test the distance to property of the point 3D variable that we created above. And we see if the difference is smaller than 0 0.001. If old point distance 2 and then center point is less than 0 0.01. Move the end if. And here we're going to return sampler status no change because the change is so small in step 16 we are going to get the radius for the circle. So this would be where case will be 1. Seventeen. We need a, a double variable. Let's go. Hold radius. And 
and we use this variable to test to see if the cursor has moved during the jigging for the radius. Step 18, declare a variable as a jig prompt distance options. Just have the message sent to the command line, pick a radius. So here's step 19. Let's make the use base point property of, of the jig prompt distance options. Make that equal to true. Step 20, we make the base point property equal to our center point that we got when we were asking the user for the center point. So we're ready to get input here in step 21. So let's declare a variable as a prompt double result. And this time we're going to use acquire distance. And let's pass in our jig prompt distance options. Step 22, here we want to check to see if the prompt double result is okay. If jig prompt result dot status is equal to prompt status OK, then we move the in dip after step 27. 23, we make our radius member variable equal to the jig prompt result. value. Let's move along now, go to step 24, and here we need to check to see if the radius is too small. I'm using system, math, then absolute. Let's see if that radius is less than 0.1. And we want to move the in-dip after step 25. Step 25, we're just going to make that radius member variable 1. It's just an arbitrary value. Just so it won't be so small that you won't be able to see it when you're doing that drag. When we get to 26, Let's check to see if the cursor has moved. We'll use an if then statement and compare those two points. The old radius minus the radius. And we know that there has not been any change to the location and we want to return sampler status no change. Twenty-eight, we return sampler status OK. So let's move along to step twenty-nine. This is the update function. 
For every input, we need to update the entity. So we're going to use a select case here as well. And we use the current input value member variable. We put the in select after step 33. This is case zero. We're going to be working on the, getting the update for the circle. And the jig stores the circle as an entity type. So let's change it to a circle so we can access the properties easy using C type. So use me entity and then cast that to a circle. And we use this center property. And make that equal to center point. And here we're going to be updating the radius for that circle. So it's very similar to what we did in step 30. C type me dot entity circle and here we can get the radius and make it equal to our radius member variable. So that completes the steps for creating the class and now we need to go use that class in the circle jig command Step 34, we need to declare a, a variable called a, as a circle. Let's make that equal to a new circle. We'll just put it at the origin of point 3D class. And the we can use vector 3D. and the z-axis for the normal. And let's give it 10 for a radius. So this is just the initial values for that circle, but they're going to be changed when we use those in a jig. Now 35, let's use our class. Let's just call it jig as new. And my circle jig. And we need to pass in an entity. We'll pass in a circle. The circle that we created in step 34. In step 36, we're going to loop for the different inputs and use our jig. So the first time we loop, or it's going to be zero, and that's going to we're going to be getting the center of the circle, and then one will be where we get the radius. We put the next after step 41. Here in step 37, let's make the current input property of that class equal to i, which will be 0 the first time through. Here in step 38, let's get in the editor. So I'll just type in dmed as editor. And that's going to equal the application document manager MDI active document editor. Now we can invoke the jig by calling the drag method of the editor, but we need to get a prompt result that it's going to return. So type in dim prompt result as prompt result. We'll make that equal to the editor, then drag, and we need to pass in our jig. 
test the status property of the prompt result variable. See if the status equals cancel or or error. Let's move the end if after step forty one. In step 41, we just return. If there was some kind of problem with the the jig returning some cancel or error. So we've come to the end of the lab seven steps. We'll go ahead and try to build this and see the results of running it in AutoCAD. Notice that this command that we added our code to is circle jig is also going to get the database, start a transaction, get the model space or paper space, block table record by using current space ID. It's going to append our circle to it and then the transaction is committed and then it's closed. And you can see that that is some code that we used in other labs to add a, an entity. So let's go ahead and build this project. there was a, an error. So let's go fix that error. Yeah, I've declared this incorrectly. So this is an integer. Let's try building it once more. That time it built OK. So I need to set this up for debugging. properties for the solution and debug start an external program and I'm just going to use AutoCAD EXE from AutoCAD Mechanical 2011 let's go ahead and go to debug and start debugging okay AutoCAD has started up let's net load our DLL and let's type in circle jig it asked me for a center point but I'm not getting any prompt for the radius so let's debug this I believe it's right here where there's a problem so let's see if this breakpoint is hit on this re this return here and I see our breakpoint is hit so this is there's something wrong with this code here and I think I see what it is so let's stop debugging and this code is incorrect so this should be or I need another I need prompt status prompt result dot status as well in this other part of the or statement now let's try this again so I just hit F5 okay back in AutoCAD that load and then run that circle jig command. Ask me to select the center point, and this time I'm getting the radius. So that code seems to be working okay now. So I click a point, and I can drag and get the radius. So the circle jig, pick a center point, and so you can see how you can create uh, jig drag images and get points for the user as they're dragging it around. So if I wanted to put this circle at the center point, type in CEN and then get the center point of that circle 
and I could create another. So it's just emulating the circle command, but you see how you could do that. So if you had a, a block reference or some other thing that you needed to drag around the screen so the user could place it visually, this is what the jig will allow you to do. Thank you for watching this DevTV presentation, and good luck with Lab 7. We'll continue this AutoCAD.NET API training in Session 8, where we'll see how to create more user interface elements, such as a context menu, drag and drop, and extend the options dialog.